Hey, what's up? Lightbulb Joe here. Today we are going to discuss the November 1992 book, R.L. Stein, Goosebumps, Say Cheese and Die. So this takes place in Pitt's Landing. We have an actual location. Where Pitt's Landing is, I don't actually remember. I want to say like California, but uh, I wasn't 100% sure. Pitt's Landing, that's the name of it. Uh, we have Greg. Greg Banks is the main character. Shari is his next door neighbor slash best friend. They have another friend, Michael, and they have another friend, Doug, who they call Bird. So the four of them are doing adventurous stuff, right? This is like an 130 pages, 132, 132 pages came out. I know I said it. I just want to refresh. November 92, the fourth book in the Goosebumps, I was going to say film series, Goosebumps book series. The, I was going to say film again, the film, the book. <laughs> the book has, again, the four middle school kids, I want to say like eighth grade, um, they reference ninth graders as older than them uh as two bullies so certain parts certain scenes of this book reference like a cocker spaniel running it down a driveway and like yipping at them and running back and stuff like that and then there's two bullies referenced who are named joey and mickey um who then like are known in the in the area for like stealing kids bikes and like dropping them places and we know that the bullies in the third book that we just talked about uh what was the third book that we just talked about The head of the basement was the second. Oh, Monster Blood, obviously. Um, I assumed the Cocker Spaniel referenced in the this book and the bullies referenced in this book who steal the bikes and dump them were the same characters that were introduced in Monster Blood. But they're not, because I went back to Monster Blood and the two bullies referenced in Monster Blood have two totally different names and they're brothers. Um, conveniently, it's the same dog, but same type of dog, but it's not the same characters, it's not the same location. I was like, oh, so close, tying the worlds together as one canonical universe it's all one canonical universe but this particular story of four has no association with three in regards to the two bullies are not the same two bullies the dog is not the same dog okay so greg and friends do stuff right it's summertime they're hanging out they're doing their stuff and so they eventually come across this abandoned house that everybody knows locally they go into the basements. Um, they keep being stalked by this guy that they name Spidey because he always wears black and he's very ling lengthy and, you know, limbery arms, that kind of thing. S spindly arms, there we go. And, like, they assume that Spidey has just been crashing there, you know, all this time. So they, like, explore and all these things and then Greg finds a, a vice grip where he turns the handle and then a door opens up and he finds this camera just chilling there. So Polaroid kind of immediate you know, the film comes out and, and, you know, comes to light. So it's not any brand though. That was the confusing part. So Greg takes a picture of Michael as he's on the stairs and at posing, but in the picture, it shows Michael falling off the broken stairs. And then moments later, Michael falls off the broken stairs. So the camera is showing the bad future, right? It's showing what can happen in the bad sense. He take Greg takes a picture of his dad's new car. His dad gets in an accident. The car is totaled. Uh, they take a picture of Bird, I believe, before a baseball game, before the Little League game that they reference. Um, Bird gets hit in the head and, you know, gets all twisted in the face and, you know, stuff, right? Stuff. They go to Sherry's birthday party. Greg takes her picture. She's not there. He takes her picture again. She's not there again. All of a sudden, she disappears for days. Where did Sherry go? So, it's a, it's a, trying to, Greg's trying to figure out what did, what to do with this camera, Right? Should he tell people about this camera? But when he does tell people about this camera, nobody believes him. And then what? How, how do you get? How do you fix this? Right? So he's mad. He's mad. So he rips up some pictures, and then all of a sudden, Sherry calls him, and she said, "I don't know what happened, but it's been two days. I'm back. Two days after my birthday party, when I disappeared, I am now back. I am. My mother's weeping in the in the corner. Mom, pull yourself together. All that stuff, right?" So he's like, you know what? I just got to bring this back. I'm tired of Spidey like going through my room. I'm tired of of all this stuff happening. It's just a nuisance. Let's get rid of it. So the friends then go back to the house. They put the camera back after the bullies are trying to get the camera from them. Um, they have a, not a battle, but they have a, a, was it just Sherry and Greg? I feel like it was just Sherry and Greg. I think Michael and Douglas were, uh, Mike, Mike and Bird chickened out at that point. No pun intended because Bird's a chicken. Aha. So yes, so it was Spidey versus Sherry and Greg. And then we get the whole backstory that Spidey was a co-inventor scientist of this camera and he took advantage of his partner because he wanted to sell it for 
money and fame. Uh, but then the, the partner was very well versed in dark magic. So he put a curse on the camera and that's why the camera does these things. So Spidey realized he can't sell this. So he wanted to hide it away, lock it away forever. That way no one can has to, has to deal with this nonsense. But then Greg and company found it. So that's why he wanted it back. But now that Greg and Sherry are there and they know everything, they can't leave. So there's a fight back and forth. And then Greg gets the camera again and in the midst of the flashing and, and thunderstorm that there is, takes the picture Lightning goes off, thunder booms, camera flashes right into Spidey's face. And then moments later, Spidey is dead on the ground. He's dead. It was, it was a moment. <clears throat> it was so quick. It was so wonderful. Very quick back and forth with these middle schoolers and this, and this guy, you know, who's trying to kill them in general. So they then tell the police that they can't, they, they crashed at the house just to try to avoid the storm. And that's when they found the body. And then now no one ever has to worry about the camera. But the bullies are watching all this happen through the window. And they sneak back down to take the camera before the police drag the body away. And they themselves have the camera. And what happens next? So, very quick. Very fun. Very... I really like that R.L. Stein writes descriptive, but very quickly writes descriptive. I hate when writers take four pages to tell me why the sky is blue. I can't stand it. I can't read certain authors because of that. I can't stand it. But R.L. Stein's very quick. He says, this character just walked in the room. She's wearing X, Y, and Z. This character walked in the room. He's wearing A, B, and C. They do this. They do that. They say this. They say that. Very quick. Boom, 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 boom. 131, 132 pages. We got from A to Z very quickly within the plot point, very quickly within the story of everything was cohesive. I didn't see any problems with it. They explained that the camera was cursed. That's fine. We went through it. Very simple. I really love how Arl Stein writes. I really love how fast he writes. So I'm very excited to read the remainder of our book series. We're four down, 62 in total. On to the next review. Which <laughs> mahalo.